Hello, everyone. The piano music you just heard is a signal to settle into your seats and prepare for the start of our worship service. Before we begin, I have a few quick announcements. Please check your Sunday handout if you got one. You can still get one at the back table. Uh, and take notice of a few of these things coming up this week. Um, after, okay, let's see. We do have next Sunday, following the service, we have a uh, orientation session. That is March 3rd. It will go from noon until 1.30. And that's for folks who want to know more about UU and San Gabriel. And there will be child care and lunch will be provided. Um, you can also sign up at the back table or email uh, Clara Dugan to get involved with the orientation. That is particularly handy for new folks. Uh, Reverend Walter, who was with us last week and is director of our Texas UU Justice Ministry, will be speaking at a rally at the Capitol this coming Saturday, organized by the Poor People's Campaign. Carpools are forming, so please check the messenger, that's our email list, um, for more details, or speak to Michelle Augustine to get involved for those carpools. Last, we are hosting a Ramadan iftar dinner that will be provided by the Dialogue Institute of Austin. The entire meal will be prepared by our Muslim friends. Note that the date is March 17th. That is the same as St. Patrick's Day. Uh, not what was previously noted in the messenger. And rever reservations are required by March 6th. Susan Patterson will be at the back of the sanctuary today with a sign-up sheet to take your reservation. And this is a wonderful interfaith experience for both adults and children. Good morning, and welcome to San Gabriel Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Whether you are here in a sanctuary or watching from home, we are so glad you are here. My name is Sarah Smith. My pronouns are up for interpretation. And I have been a member of San Gabriel since May of 2015. In addition to serving as lay leader, I enjoy contributing to our fellowship by serving on the Board of Trustees. Today, I am happy to introduce you to our guest speaker, Nancy Moan Barnard, whose pronouns are she, her. She's in her last year at Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary, where she is working towards fellowship with the UUA. Nancy completed her chaplaincy internship at Del, Ch Del Seton in Austin and is hoping to complete a chaplain residency after graduation. Nancy was raised in the church the United Church of Christ, but found her way to Unitarian Universalist Church in 2006. Welcome, and thank you for being with us today. San Gabriel is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association. There are over a thousand UU congregations in the United States. All of us together are working for a just, peaceful, and sustainable world. Sustaining each other here in community is the first step down the long road of that important work. We especially welcome any guests today. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. We hope you'll stay after the service for coffee and conversation. And members, please do look for those visitor tags and extend a hearty welcome. If you'd like to know more about us and learn about upcoming events, please fill out a visitor's card that is in the seat pocket uh, in front of you and sign up for our newsletter. And please know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whomever you love, 
wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Now let's greet this day in song. Our opening hymn is number 1046 in the Teal Hymnal. The lyrics will be projected. It's, Shall We Gather at the River? Please rise in body or spirit as you are able. As we light our chalice, we create sacred space together. I call you into this time of connection within, among, and beyond with the words of Tara Humphreys, a Unitarian Universalist minister whose pronouns are she, hers. Whether you are from the South, the East, the North, or the West, whether you were born into this faith, found it, or it found you, whether you feel at home or are still trying to find your place, whether you believe in God, are open to mystery, or still have no idea, whether you are unemployed, underemployed, cobbling things together, overworking, or in school, whether you are holding anxiety, grief, confusion, anger, hope, restlessness, or deep peace, Unitarian Universalism has a place for you. It is right here, and this chalice is lit for you. Our affirmation is an expression of our covenant with one another. Uh, please le read after me and the words will be projected. The doctrine of this church is love. The quest of truth is its sacrament. 
Service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace. To seek knowledge in freedom. To serve humanity in fellowship. To the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. And now it is time for our wonder box. Any young folks who are interested are welcome to come up front. We have some empty seats and if they can see better or even help open the wonder box. Karina is not available today, but uh, I have learned from the best, so don't worry, I've got this. As you use, we use our wandering minds to help one another learn and grow, and there are many things in life that are unknowable, hopefully not what's in this wonder box. So let's get some guesses. What does everyone think is in the wonder box today? Debit cards? <laughs> oh, a deck of cards. Okay. Do you have a guess? Don't know. Okay. Any any other guesses? Anyone want to come up and see? Okay. How about you open the box and we'll, we'll, have, uh, we'll have Sophia fold it up for everyone to see. Yeah, fold it up so everyone can see. What is that? A Lego house. A little Lego house. Thank you. You can put that right up here. And uh, you can take a seat up front if you want to see the story better. We got some seats. Okay. So what do we think of when we see a little Lego house? Wisdom. Okay. Building. That's a good one. Home. Perfect one theme with our story. So let's see what our story has to do with houses. Shelter, written by Celine Clare, illustrated by Chen Lang. Published by Kids Can Press. It's morning. And as the day stirs, the animals do too. Some slowly, some gently, while others go leaping out of bed. Over breakfast, everyone catches up on the latest news. A storm is coming. There's no time for panic. Together, the animals all set to work gathering wood, squirreling away food and quieting their fears. They must be prepared. At last, everything is ready and everyone braces for the storm. The wind begins to pick up. But all is well. The animals are safe and sound in their homes. What if others are still outside? Little Fox asks. In the distance, two figures emerge from the fog, the wind howling all around them. Everyone watches them from their windows and wonders, who are these strangers? What are they doing here? What do they want? Soon they come knocking. The wind is cold. In exchange for some tea, could we warm ourselves by your fire? Our fire is out. Try next door. Our bellies are empty. In exchange for some tea, could we have a few cookies for dipping? We have no food. Try next door. The night is dark. In exchange for some tea, could we take comfort in the light of your hearth? Our den is too small and crowded. Try next door. 
but next door there is only a hill. That's all right, says the big brother. Maybe the hill will be more welcoming. As the bears set off, leaning on each other and into the wind, a voice rings out from behind them. Wait, calls Little Fox. He has found something to share, after all. You can't eat it, and it's not as warm or nearly as bright as a fire. But it's still generous, Big Brother says kindly. Thank you. On the hill, the night grows colder, so cold that the wind turns white. Big Brother holds out his hand. Little Brother sticks out his tongue. Soon the ground is blanketed in soft white snow. Big Brother and Little Brother look at each other and smile. They will be just fine. But there's danger in the fox den. The snowfall is so heavy that it becomes more threatening than the wind. The roof folds and twists, ready to give way. Quickly, everyone out, shouts Father Fox. What will they do now? It's so cold, says Mother Fox. It's so dark, says Father Fox. Look, says Little Fox. I see a light. As the foxes approach, the scent of ginger and cinnamon fills the air. Closing their eyes and taking deep breaths, they follow their noses. Finally, they reach the curious light. The snow is still falling. The wind is still blowing. Little Fox steps forward and shouts, The wind is cold and the night is dark. In exchange for some cookies, would you share your shelter with us? The lantern light is weakening, our den is small and crowded, and we have nothing to eat, says Big Brother. But our tea will warm you better than any fire, and with your cookies for dipping, it will be delicious. Come in, come in. And that is how two strangers came to share their humble shelter on a stormy winter's night when the moon could not be seen. The end. It hurts to see people in need, and it hurts to see them turned away. We know both things are wrong, and I'm glad the story had a good ending, even if it was Big Brother and Little Brother, the ones who could least afford to share, who extended the welcome that everyone else had denied them. At San Gabriel, our, our social justice team is doing so much to help right wrongs, and all of us, every Sunday, do so much to extend welcome. Nancy's going to be speaking today about how we can do more to extend welcome and make safe spaces for everyone, especially those who, in a place like Texas, need our life-saving message. Our child care personnel and volunteers are going to talk more about the story in their time together today and maybe make some Lego houses too. Is everyone ready to go? Okay. When you hear the word evangelism, what comes to mind? For many of us in the Unitarian Universalist community, the word evangelism can have negative connotations, bringing to mind religious trauma from our pasts. Indeed, nowadays the word evangelism has come to be associated with a particular sect of Christianity and not the actual dictionary definition 
which means to spread the good news of the gospel. For many of us, evangelism is a negative word with which we want nothing to do. And yet today, I'm going to make an argument for reclaiming the word evangelism for our Unitarian Universalist tradition. Though many of you may cringe, I'd like to argue that evangelism is needed in the Unitarian Universalist Church. Now, evangelism is a word that one doesn't often hear paired with Unitarian Universalist. In fact, for many of you, evangelism may be a triggering word. I know that for many years, it certainly triggered me, and it took me a really, really long time to change my connotation of this word. Evangelism first became a loaded and negative word for me back in 1992 when I moved to Georgetown. When I was 16 years old, in the middle of my sophomore year, my parents uprooted my Northern California family to relocate here. The culture shock was real. Whereas back home, religion was something that people kept to themselves, at school, the what's your name question was inevitably followed up with, where do you go to church? So one day in high school, the administration called a general assembly, and we all filed into the gym, prepared for the usual pep rallies, student recognitions, and school announcements. But surprisingly, the gym had been transformed into what looked like a modern CrossFit gym. Gymnastic mats lined the gym floor, one-foot stacks of plywood were dispersed throughout the set, and a variety of weights, ropes, and other props filled in the remaining spaces. This assembly was obviously no ordinary school function. The principal excitedly announced that today we had special visitors. And as he gave introductions, 10 huge Hulk Hogan looking men entered the gymnasium and took up positions around the floor mats. They then proceeded to put on an electrifying show that involved karate chopping through stacks of plywood, along with other feats of strength. <clears throat> At the end of the show, the students cheered with wild abandon, and the men invited us to another show that evening, a show that promised even more amazing strength stunts. My friend and I decided that we would absolutely attend that evening's show. After all, what else was going on in Georgetown that night? Hours later, we pulled up to a church that was at the time on the outskirts of Georgetown. The venue struck us as a little bit odd for a muscle show. However, it could easily be explained by the lack of venues in the area at that time. We entered and took our seats, and soon the same muscle men were entering the auditorium, flexing and showing off their muscles while Christian rock blasted. We noted that the music was a marked change from the heavy metal that had been playing earlier at school. Things only continued getting weird. The Muslimen led the audience in an opening prayer. What then followed was almost two hours filled with one testimony after the next. Each of the men got a chance to tell their stories. Stories about losing one's path, finding Jesus, and God gifting them with supernatural strength the latter of which allowed them to put on shows, travel, and testify. As audience members, we were there to witness the abilities which with the Lord had endowed these men. The primary message was that the Lord provides and even rewards those who are faithful and willing to proselytize in his name. Now, I'm not fond of bait and switch situations. And although I wanted to see them perform more feats of strength, I couldn't handle the evangelism that was the show's focus. My friend and I decided that we were done and headed to the exits to leave. As we stepped outside the auditorium, a huge guy who looked like a bouncer stopped us. He began to grill us on why we were leaving, and we tried to explain that we had seen the show earlier that day. But soon the conversation changed tones. As the man began to question us about our beliefs in Jesus and the power of God, we felt like we were being cross-examined. My friend and I eyed the, long, the door with longing, calculating whether or not we could make it to the parking lot and lose this guy who was doing his best to keep us there. But, I hate to admit it, we were intimidated by this man who literally towered over us. And finally, we decided to give up and hopelessly slunk back into the auditorium. By the time the show was over, I was fuming. 
I resented that we had been pressured to stay. I was annoyed that the man had intimidated us, and moreover, that he had intentionally done so. Instead of making me feel fired up about Jesus and God, I began to suspect that Christianity was a scam full of con artists that used scare tactics to elicit belief. Indeed, this experience had the opposite effect of what it had intended. Instead of celebrating the gifts that faith can bring, it made me want to run as far away from Christianity as fast as possible. Unfortunately, this incident was one of several evangelizing experiences that I had encountered in the first few months I spent in Georgetown. All of the experiences felt like someone was pushing views onto me, rigid views that did not invite discussion. Moreover, in several of these encounters, I was told that I was going to hell, despite the fact that I was, though not for long, a Christian. Indeed, these experiences had the after effect of me leaving the Christian church, and it took me years to recover from some of these experiences. So fast forward to last year. I'm a Unitarian Universalist seminary student attending a Presbyterian school in Austin. And one of my requirements is a mission and evangelism class. I dreaded taking this class. For despite the many years since my traumatic experiences, the word evangelism still elicited a negative reaction. The class surprised me, however. Instead of encouraging us to, to evangelize and find ourselves some Christian converts, and instead examined ev evangelism from an academic perspective, specifically exploring colonialism. When we were expected to read a book on evangelism and present our findings to the class, I was excited when the professor allowed me and two other Unitarian Universalists to form a group and research evangelism in our own faith tradition. The book we chose was entitled Seeking Paradise, a Unitarian Mission for Our Times, and it was written by Stephen Lingwood, who is a British Unitarian. The book focuses on Unitarian uh, evangelism and missionaries in Britain. For example, it talks about Richard Wright, who spread the message of universalism long before the merging of the Unitarian and Universalist churches in 1961. And Joseph Tuckerman, who created a mission in London and worked on behalf of the poor. But my favorite example of Unitarian evangelism was Charles Dahl a Unitarian missionary who went to India to seek converts. Dahl, however, ended up being the convert when he decided to join a liberal Hindu reformist movement. I find this anecdote to be particularly amusing as Dahl's conversion is such a Unitarian Universalist move. His openness to the Hindu faith exemplifies our fourth principle, which is the free and responsible search for truth and meaning wherever it may be found. In his attempt to spread the values of the faith, he remained open to truth and meaning and found it in Hinduism. This is all to say that the Unitarian Universalist Church does have a history of evangelism. Though as we have furthered ourselves from our Christian roots, we have also stopped evangelizing efforts. But my friends, it's time to restart our evangelizing efforts again. For in 2024, the UU Church has heretofore unseen opportunity for growth. According to the Pew Research Center, an increasing number of Americans are leaving Christianity and instead identifying as nuns, and that's spelled N-O-N-E-S and not N-U-N-S. Now the term nuns refers to those with no particular religious identification, which includes atheists and agnostics. Indeed, in 2019, the Pew Research Center showed that over the span of the past 10 years, Christianity had lost approximately 12% of their population. This Christian attrition can be seen across the Northern Hemisphere, although Christianity does continue to grow south of the equator. Meanwhile, research tells us that 26% of people now identify as nuns. And although I've not conducted a formal survey, I can tell you anecdotally from my work in religious education, both with children and adults, that Unitarian Universalist churches have a significant number of nuns in our congregations. Just because people are atheists or unable to identify with a mainline tradition 
doesn't mean that spiritual needs do not exist. People long for communities and connections, for a space in which they can unite with others in the name of social justice. The Unitarian Universalist Church can fulfill that need. And yet, few people know about our existence. Even at my seminary, where I am surrounded by people who are smart and knowledgeable about faith traditions, many people are unfamiliar with the Unitarian Universalist Church. Often people simply refer to us as Unitarians, unaware of how important the Universalist name is to our identities. In many ways, my fellow UU students and I have found ourselves acting as evangelists on behalf of our faith as we try to educate others on the meaning and importance of being both a Unitarian and a Universalist. My peers have been nothing but curious and gracious. But if even seminarians lack a full understanding of Unitarian Universalism, imagine the population at large. Many of my friends know that I'm involved in the UU church and that I'm in seminary working towards ordination. But no matter how many times I tell them that I'm not Christian, they inevitably forget. Church only has one meaning to them, which is Christianity. When I explain what our Unitarian Universalist Church is like, they often look at me in disbelief. What do you mean there are atheists in your church? Why would an atheist go to church? At this point in the conversation, I often point out that just because people don't believe in God doesn't mean that they're not seeking meaning, truth, and knowledge. Moreover, many people are looking for a community in which their questions and beliefs, no matter how unusual, will be welcomed with open arms. The Unitarian Universalist Church is the answer that many people are inadvertently seeking. We just need to let them know that we exist, though I am hopeful that the word is slowly spreading. Interestingly, in one of my seminary classes, we were asked to conduct interviews with pastors about the state of their churches. Across the board, pastors reported decreasing numbers. But I seem to be the exception. My church, which is First UU, reported growth, and many of the challenges that they were focused on we're keeping up with the increased numbers. So now is the time for us to shine, my friends. Our faith tradition is both beautiful and unique. It's a tradition that welcomes all inquiry, a tradition that acknowledges the validity of all sources and experiences, a tradition that cares about equity for all humans. We can't be shy about sharing our faith with others. For the Unitarian Universalist truth is truly the good news that many people seek. So what can we do? How can we take action? Though I know it may feel distasteful, invite people to our services. Studies show that people are more likely to attend a church service when they are invited by a friend. Or don't be afraid to wear your Unitarian Universalist shirts when participating in social justice events. I'm wearing mine today. Tell people what we are about. Tell people that we are affirming. Spread the good news that there is a place for everyone within our walls. For we are Unitarian Universalists, and we recognize the inherent worth and dignity of every person as they engage in the free and responsible search for truth and for meaning. All right, let's pause here and take a moment for reflection on what we've just heard. Go ahead and close your eyes. And I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths Let's take another moment to take a deep and cleansing breath. Inhale deeply. 
and exhale. For the joys shared, we join together in celebration. And for the sorrows and concerns, we feel empathy and compassion. And for all that remains unspoken, may the caring of the community offer a space of deep kindness and care. As a meditation now on the joys and sorrows we just heard, let us sing hymn number 114, Forward Through the Ages. Once again, please rise in body or spirit as you are able. We take an offering each week to sustain this space that we call home and to support the work of our fellowship. If this is your first time here, please feel free to let the plate pass you by. Your presence this morning is a wonderful gift itself and we thank you for coming. If you filled out a visitor card, however, you can feel free to put that in the basket. Our offertory music, Joe is bringing us Gather the Spirit by Jim Scott. The offering will now be gratefully received, and we thank you.
Today's words for extinguishing the chalice were written by Amanda Alice Uluhan, whose pronouns are she, they. Uluhan is a religious educator and a lifelong Unitarian Universalist. Together, we have enjoyed the warmth and beauty of stories of this flame and of this special community. As our chalice flame is extinguished this morning, we can still remember that its glow is carried within us. We can use our inner light in this flame to kindle new sparks throughout our lives and in the world. May this spirit of peace and togetherness bless your lives. Thank you again, Nancy, for being with us today. And everyone, don't forget to check your Sunday handout for the important announcements that were mentioned um, before the start of the service, including the rally at the Capitol Saturday by the Poor People's Campaign. Carpooling is getting planned. Please see Michelle about this. The Ramadan Iftar dinner, March 17th. That's the 17th. Please make your reservations because we need a final attendance count turned in on March 6th. So don't wait. March 17th is a Sunday evening. It is also St. Patrick's Day. We are absolutely certain the 17th. And uh, the orientation session following next Sunday service, that is March 3rd, noon to 1.30 p.m. For, for new folks, folks who would like to join us. And now I invite everyone to greet each other during our coffee and conversation time. Mm -hmm. 